everyone welcome back to dreaming of santa fe part two on this resin geode you'll see that after i mix my resin i quickly divide it into smaller containers this is so that my resin doesn't set up quickly because it will tend to do that if you leave high volumes and concentration in a big cup so always get your resin out into smaller containers or get it out on your canvas or board pretty quick and then you'll have a good long working time with it. So I'm mixing up my resin and adding my pigments so that I can fill in these last two sections and I really struggled with this cream colored section that you'll see in this video and it wasn't until I did the lines at the very end that I came to terms with it and decided to let it go. Sorry about the white balance problems, folks. My uh, different camera angles had different white balance and that's just the way it goes. And I didn't spend a lot of time trying to correct the color, but you get the gist of it and this shows you a closer angle of how I blend and work my resin. And here I am mixing in some magenta. One last attempt to add some interest to this cream colored section and I just probably should have let it be but hey that's how it goes when you're working with resin. So I'm going to move on to my middle vein in this mineral piece and call it good. So in this section, I'm using some Dari Spine Glitter, my favorite glitter, and mixing it with some Soap Shop pigment to create the base coat on this middle area. And I always do a quick torch after I've poured out my resin. Then I like to spread it out, and then I'll usually torch it again before I move on. This just helps keep the air bubbles at a minimum and helps keep my resin fluid so that I can continue to work with it. Then I sprinkled in some diamond dust just to give it a little glitz on the undercoat of this before I started laying down my bigger chunks of crushed glass and topping it off with my favorite glitter, which is by Doris, called Glitz. Then you'll see me adding in some of that magenta to cover up my clay lines, and once again making a final attempt at filling in that creamy colored section by adding a little bit of magenta to give it a little more interest. After allowing my piece to cure for a few days, I went ahead and started playing with my pens and markers to create the lines you see in a lot of geodes. And I've really struggled trying to find a white marker that I like that works fluidly and flows nice without leaking or drying out. And ultimately, at this point, out of all of the ones I'd found, the ones you get at Hobby Lobby by, I think it's called Treehouse those work the best. And I want to make mention those bright magenta lines you see there on the top of my clay. That was a Bic permanent marker pen and I do not recommend those. That did dissolve a bit in my resin and spread out. And it's time to add my tape around the sides again, making sure it's sealed really well because I'm going to apply my clear coat and final coat on this piece. And it always makes everything pop and glow and sparkle so much more that when I get to this point, I'm always kind of relieved that it looks as good as it does. This piece was way outside my comfort zone color-wise. But I think it's kind of fun, and I also think it's good to test yourself and push yourself outside of your comfort zone sometimes, because you never know what you'll get. So here is my finished piece, and again, I thank you for watching. 
I appreciate all your comments and if you like my videos hit subscribe I have more to come have a great day everyone